Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.03 once again on the beautiful map Anori in between Rohan and Isengard against Gondor and Isengard. Before further ado, let's get it started. And once again on the beautiful and most famous Battle for Middle Earth 1 map in a 2v2, the map Anorian. On the bottom left side we have the blue Isengard player Karkira, his ally is the green Gondor player Stevie. Both of these players are Battle for Middle Earth 1 expert players. They are against the green Rohan player China, who is also a expert. And his ally at the bottom right side is the red Isengard player Ra. Once again, that's one of the best matchups you can actually get to play on the beautiful map Anorian. Because Isengard is a very solid faction if you can combine that with a Gondo or Rohan. And we have both the options available in this match. And for me, Rohan is a bit stronger early on because Rohan has the power of spamming additional peasants from the farms inside and outside of his base. Gonza on the other side has to make some stuff happen with the only two soldiers you can begin the game with. But on the bright side for Gonza, you have a stronger power point from the beginning of the game. You don't have to pick the draft unlike Rohan. You can go for the heal or the elven wood. And also soldiers are stronger in compared to the peasants. But once again, that's gonna be only effective in the first two minutes into the game. And Rohan on the other side will be able to get more and more peasants on the field and that's gonna be almost impossible for the Gondor Isengard team to defend. And it looks like they will be grouping around this side. Gondor is making a really interesting choice of splitting his one soldier and fighting in a 2v1 situation against the peasants. He has to use heal already before the fight actually starts. And also this push, because of that reason, is not gonna be that effective anymore. But it looks like Gondor player is trying to not lose his farms. He's splitting now with the Urukai, which makes kinda sense. And also a very interesting move from the Rohan player, to be honest. I was expecting him to move to the downside to group with this Urukai. But that's not even needed. Because look at this Isengard player, Ra. He was not even using the war chant just yet. He will be waiting for the peasants to arrive. And this mill is gonna be just taken down. And during all this time, Rohan is gonna get more and more peasants on the field. He might be even potentially able to keep this mill protected. Oh, oh, the Hobbit wasn't able to get stealthed and that's the reason why Stevie, the Green Gondor player, will be able to capture the settlement for himself. That's very unfortunate. If you can cloak the Hobbit, he will never be able to purchase this. But it's not the end of the world, even though it's a bad start. Not for the Red Isengard player though. He was able to destroy one of the mills. Now he's actually wasting time and making a wrong call. He has to actually go down and try to destroy this mill instead. Not only the meals are easier to be killed, but also destroying the economy from the evil faction is should be the higher priority. You know, in order to cut his resource income, even though he has four furnaces inside the base already, while Ra, the red Isengard player, has only three. Okay, that's, I mean, I was expecting a little bit more peasant to be honest with you guys, but it's okay. He wants to go for the early stable instead, which is kind of fine. And it looks like he was even able to keep his allies mill protected for a really long time. But it's gonna be eventually taken down. You see how many workers are repairing this, but that's not gonna be enough. Very close, but not close enough. And the mill has been taken down. But with the help of the Hobbit, Mary should be able to defend this. And his ally will be able to reclaim the settlement in no time. This arm has been taken down. Also, this mill is gonna be taken down. It looks like that the Blue Isengard player Kerkira is going for the mightiest hero Lourdes. I mean, I'm not even joking, Lourdes is the most cost-efficient hero in the game. For only 1200 resources, you get Carnage, which makes him really strong. There are only few heroes that can actually 1v1 him, and they are way more expensive than Lourdes. Your cripple ability with level 1 is gonna make him to the best anti-hero hero in the game. And then on top of that, you have also leadership and even pillage, which means money, money, money every time you kill enemy units or buildings. I mean, everything that you want is in one single hero, which kind of makes sense because Isengard has only two heroes and both of them have to be careful or powerful uh, because Rohan, for example, has way more heroes like Gondor and even Mordor and Isengard is the least heroes. They don't have Sharku, for example, in Battle for Middle of One, unlike they do in BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King. You have uh, two farms, blacksmith, into the stable, into the first condonite. The second one is almost out as well. Rohan is gonna creep this work layer kinda defensively. Gondor is gonna do the same, potentially around this side. Nope, he's not doing that. Stevie wants to go for an offensive creeping, but he won't be there in time. And this row hit him after being done with the creep, they will, be hit they will hit level 2. That's gonna make them stronger in compared to the condonites. 
And he has to also get the money. Get the money, get the money, get the money. He will get the money and he will get out. He has also Lourdes as an assistant. Warchan has been used on Stevie. Heal has been used from Stevie as well. Rohan has to be careful. Don't lose the level to Rohirrim. It looks like he will be getting in safety. And just don't waste time here. Is Lourdes coming from the opening team? Nope, he's not coming. He's actually around the bottom side. I believe he was chasing down some of the peasants. I believe the Gondor player Stevie is trying to keep this Lords away from the lair, and this way his ally, the Blue Eisengard player Kerkira, can creep this troll layer uncontested. Does he have Warchant yet? Yeah, Ra has, Ra has Warchant. He needs to use it on this Rohirrim from his ally to make them stronger in compared to the Gondor Knight. This way they can not only win this fight, but they can even creep this one potentially offensively. That's the goal. Lourdes is gonna get in safety, of course. Killing Lourdes is not that easy. Bef one Gondor Knight only without Forge Bleeds. It's gonna take you ages. And the Warchan is already gone. I'm actually confused why Ra is not using the Warchan on his ally. He was not even reclaiming the settlement just yet. The creep has been secured by the Blue Isengard player. And Lourdes is all about to hit level 4. Level 5 is gonna be a huge power spike. And also Rohan gives you more leadership. So eventually, if Ra is gonna get an army worthy of Mordor, he will get also Theorin from his ally for 50% more damage and 50% more armor. We have also seen Vision of Palantir. Vision of Palantir shouldn't or can't not only be used for uh, scouting purposes, also when it comes to chase down the enemy Gondor Knights or Rohirrim for example. So if you are playing Isengard and your ally is Rohan for example, and you are against a Gondor Mordor team and Gondor is trying to disengage, all you need to do is use your, use your vision, I can't even talk, use your vision of balance here on the enemy, on your allied units, and then they will be able to outrun the enemy cavalry units, and you can chase them down this way. Warchan has been used. Gondor has no Warchan just yet. Let's see who will be getting the last hit on the creep. I'm really curious. Rohan was able to get the last hit. That's very important in this game, by the way. But it looks like uh, that Gondor player was getting the money. It's kind of confusing because they are both using the green color, but it's fine. So this is a bit brighter, it's a bit darker. That actually shouldn't be even allowed, you know what I'm saying? Like, these colors, they are so similar to each other, they shouldn't be allowed in any game. Level 3 unlocked for Lourdes, level 5 is what they are aiming for. Level 5 is gonna be a huge achievement for 60% more damage for the nearby allied units. This Lourdes is level 4, and Rohirrim are way squishier than Gondor Knights against heroes like Lourdes. You can see, Lourdes is two-shotting them. And Gondor Knights are a bit more resistant. Gondor, Gondor Knights need to be shot like three or four times, while Rohirrim is gonna die with two single shots. They have less armor against heroes like Lords or Legolas. And Gondor Knights are a bit tanky, which kind of makes sense because Gondor Knights don't only cost you more money, but also more command points. Rohirrim costs you only 15 command points, and Gondor Knights will cost you 20. Yes, now three Gondor Knights on the field, which gets the stable to level two. We have once again the vision of Palantir being used and it looks like Stevie is trying to go for a base rush. He's asking his ally for the war chant. He might even use the Alvin Woods here if he really needs to. And also very interesting choice from China. He was getting three Rohirrim on the field and demolishing this table right after to save a spot I guess in his base and build up the armory instead. Armor, heavy armor is the right call because that's gonna make you tankier which means Lourdes will need to hit you multiple more times in order to kill your Rohirrim, but Forge Blades wouldn't be the best choice. So always go with the heavy armor when you are playing Rohan, because not only it's better, but also uh, it's cheaper on your Rohirrim. They cost only 250, while the Forge Blades will cost you 350. And the 100 resource difference actually is making a huge difference in the early game. Armory is coming up for Ra, and not yet for... Actually, okay, that's interesting to be honest. Nice! We have now two different strategies, right? So the Blue Isengard player Kerkira is building Saruman, recruiting Saruman, and the other one is actually getting combos and uh, also upgrades on the field. So this is kind of tricky, because this Saruman has to be extremely careful. If this Lourdes from Ra, the Red Isengard player, will be able to cripple him down, Saruman is an extremely squishy hero. He will be dying in no time. And also Halvin Wood has been used already. He knows that Gondor... Is a bit stronger because Gondor is able to get the upgrades a little bit faster in compared to Rohan. That's why he's just gonna stand on the Elven Wood, which also grants him 40% more armor, and he knows he can just fight there. You know? 
Does he have armor yet? No, he has no armor yet. Okay, that's why he can't fight. Armor? By the way, guys, if one horse has armor, the other one has no armor but Forge Blades, the one with armor is always gonna win. Armor is better in a 1v1 situation. Much, much better. Is he trying to get heavy armor purchase? Yes. I was expecting him to actually get the Night Chill upgrade to look for a potential chance to rush the base, but that's not being the case right now. Firebolt is a very effective spell from Saruman to actually keep getting levels and more power points from a safe distance. And also has splash damage, which means it's able to hit multiple units at the same time. The base rush is gonna happen now with two Rohirrim with Forge Blades and Heavy Armor. Remember, he has no Horseman Shields because he was demolishing this stable before the stable was able to hit level 2. Okay, nice catch on the crossbow man. Is he gonna try to take down? Nice, beautiful trample. Does he have heal? Let me check. His power points. Yeah, he has heal. And uh, the Uruk Pit is gonna be taken down actually. It means no more pikemen in his own. Cripple has been used, level 5 Lourdes, but there is no army. One more trample, fireball, and he can just peel back. That's a huge achievement. What a beautiful and great rush from the Green Rohan player China. Very well done. Very, very well done. That's gonna give him so much. That's gonna give the Rohan Isengard team now so much advantage. He's gonna cancel the Warm Tongue because he was all about the dodge. Warm Tongue is giving you the chance to control the enemy units for a short duration. Golden Knights are getting in safety, barely. And this Lord is all about to hit level 5 as well. Now, what Rohan has to do is just get Theodion on the field, group with your ally, and go for a push. Because they know now that this Isengard is far from being ready. He has to buy all the upgrades. He has to also make a brand new army since he lost his army against the Rohirrim. Two power points collected for Rohan, which means China, the Rohan player, will also have the chance to cover the enemy Elvin Wood. He's cancelling the Warm Tongue. He's desperately trying to actually cover them or control them. But I would not waste this on one single Rohirrim because this has a huge cooldown. Looks like Vision of Palantir has been used. Rohan is paying attention. Yes, he does pay attention. He needs to micro around now in order to not die against the Gondor Knights. There might be a counter attack eventually happening soonish. Gondor Knights are gonna get in safety. China is asking his ally for the Vision of Palantir to make his Rohirrim as fast as the Gondor Knights. In order to save this Rohirrim, which is very important because he has no stable. He has no stable, guys. Saving this is very important, but you see that he's making circles. This way he can actually make sure that the Gondor Knights are not able to catch them. So he's gonna be in a safe spot. Very important, very nice. King Theoden is on the fields now. Might, might save for Aragorn if he wants to, or rebuild the stable and get some more Rohirrim on the field. He has many, many different choices. He's building the farm. I'm assuming he's gonna either save for Aragorn or save enough for the middle camp. Which is gonna give you the chance to be on the center of the map. And this way you can rotate a bit faster. With statues on towers and wells around it, Isengard play can always go for a hit and run. And you know, that's why I'm saying, like, evil combined with a good faction, what is the weakness of evil? The lack of sustain. So if you can combine it with Rohan, who can build statues and wells for you, bam, your uh, weakness is negated. And now you can just hit, and if you are damaged, you can just peel back, go to the well, heal up over time. Your heroes, your units are gonna be golden. Okay, Tilden is gonna join the party. It's a huge leadership, by the way, guys. Don't underestimate that. 50% damage and armor. It's one of the best leaderships from a very cheap hero like Tilden for 1200 resources only. And he's able to give you that leadership with level 1. And if this is not gonna be enough, you can always get. Oh! He has to cover this. He has to cover this ASAP. He's taking so much damage. Warchan has been used. From who? Actually, Ra was using Warchan on his Isengard army. He took so much damage from the trample. Okay, they wanna go actually. They wanna go. We have Saruman on the field. He might commit for this one. Remember, Rohan has also Elvin Wood. But I believe he doesn't wanna use it around this side. He's gonna use it offensively instead, which makes kinda sense. No heroes from Gondor just yet. He might save for Gandalf, but Gandalf is the most expensive hero. I mean, you can now say to me, yeah, but Shanks, which game costs you more? I mean, that's not true. Like, Gandalf, you need to invest 6k and also 2 power points to make him actually effective. And also, collecting money for Gondor is a bit harder than collecting money for Mordor, who has, uh, which has 3 units, of course. And then, hey, 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 be careful. Oh my goodness. He wanted to snipe down the Saruman. Don't get into the range. Oh, that's a mistake now. I mean, he was in a good spot. Just wait until this Lord dies, then you can go. Now he's crippled down. He has heal. 
And this Lord is going to be in a safe spot too. They have more leadership. Beautiful fireball is incoming. Be careful with the Rohiri. Level almost 5. Don't lose him. He's going to be in a safe spot. Getting barely away. What is Gonda doing in the meantime? He's healing up our time, I'm assuming. Rohan is also fighting for the map control. Lourdes has been taken down anyway. Lord, uh, Wormtong has been missed. Okay, and the Rohirrim level 3 is also going to get away. And there comes the Gondonite army to commit. They know they have only Theodian leadership. Remember, Warchan was used before. It's on cooldown. And this Saruman is looking for a chance to go for a beautiful, beautiful Wizard Blast. But he needs to close the gap first. And Saruman is faster than combos. There comes the beautiful Wizard Blast from the young Saruman. Not really young, but you know what I'm saying? Like... He's sitting like a young boy in this in this situation. Tyrion is gonna get away. Be careful with the horses. Don't run into the pikeman. He's gonna get away too. Was really close. He might save this Gondor Knight. He will be able to save the Gondor Knight. Tyrion is almost level two. And now we have the king, guys. The king of Gondor. Aragorn is here for even more leadership. Aragorn gives you 50% more damage and 100% more combat experience. It means the units from Isengard are not gonna able be able to hit like a truck, but also level twice as fast. But now he has to invest so much money into reviving his lords, getting a brand new army, and upgrading every single combo, which is quite expensive. And the Blue Isengard player can now keep pressuring. He has a leadership from lords and also leadership from Saruman, which is not the best leadership. Gives you only 30% armor, but also 100% combat experience as well as a fear resistant. For example, against Aragorn's Elendil. Even though fear is not a big problem in Battle for Middle Earth 1, because once you get level 2, fear is kind of pointless already. So fear is quite weak. That's why you also don't see Boromir very often. Because Boromir Horn of Gondo, by the time he has it, everyone is level 2 already. Oh, nice cripple. Hyodin might be getting one-shotted, by the way. Hyodin is an extremely squishy hero. Fireball. Okay, big commitment. War chanted. This Rohirrim are extremely strong now. Wizard Blast is incoming, but they don't even die anymore. Aragorn has no Anduril. Without Anduril, you are... <laughs> look how slow he is. That's why you need Anduril Sword, which is not only making you tankier and stronger, but also faster. Cripple. Okay, he's gonna go down. He has now Anduril Sword. Now it's a different story, guys. Trust me. I mean, you can't run away from this situation anymore. He's gonna die to Aragorn potentially, right? Aragorn needs one more hit. He's trying hard to get away, but he might buy some more time, but it's inevitable, you know what I'm saying? He's gonna go down. And there comes the counter rush from Gondor. There's no Gandalf on the field just yet. Is Gandalf coming soon? Let me check his power points. Uh, Stevie has enough power points for Gandalf, but not enough money just yet, because Gandalf is once again the most expensive hero, especially for Gondor. But he was able to fight for the map control. He has now this farm at the top right side. Lourdes is level 5, finally. There is no Saruman on the field just yet for uh, Ra, for the Red Isengard player. And I believe he's down also a lot. Yeah, he has no money. He has industry backup soonish. And then he can use it on the three furnaces. He has to get this mill back on the field ASAP. He has been used. The rush continues. Alvin allies are focusing on the pikeman, which is very smart. Level 5 Gondorite is going to get in safety just in time. Okay, can he take down the level 3 furnace though? Lourdes is using Carnage. Carnage is giving you 100% more damage. He has to disengage. Level 3 furnaces are extremely tanky. Almost 6 power points collected for Ra, which will unlock the freezing rain. And the host of this game, by the way, guys, is also the Rohan player. Keep this place in mind. That's a huge advantage being on host in battle for middle of one, like mentioned several times in different videos. Lourdes is level 5. He has to just build a brand new army. Theodian has to get back on the field like he did. Almost level 2. He has also Aragorn uh, with level 7. I mean, Aragorn is the best hero for tankiness and he can just tank forever, you know? When you use them, Aragorn is the only hero, by the way, guys. If you use Blade Master and you have Anduril's Vault from the Spellbook, you are the only hero with Aragorn who is able to tank the Breath Fire with Ignite from Balrog. Nobody else can do that. He's extremely tanky. He can tank Lightning Sword and Easter Light like a boss from Gandalf. And he has the Blade Master and Anduril. And he has no Anduril and no Blade Master, Easter Light is able to one-shot him. 
But this able this is able to stack with each other. 50% armor from the Blade Master, and you also get a lot, like 50% armor and 100% more damage from the Anduril. And also, as you can see, 25% more movement speed. So Anduril is actually better than Gandalf the White. Okay, where is Lord when we need him? Is Lord still dead? Yeah, he's gonna be there very soon though. The Sildin needs to be careful. Always focus Sildin in those kind of situations because he's gonna make the allied units from him extremely strong. That's why it's so important to always try to kill him if you are playing against him. But when you are playing with Theodin, you need to make sure that they are, he's able to survive. For that reason, keep him behind the army. So this way, harder to reach for the opening team. They have Gandalf now on the field. Freezing Rain. They have both Freezing Rain now, by the way. They're gonna both use it. Let's see the commitment now. Oh, Saruman might go for a juicy Zap Blast. Oh, he's gonna take them. Oh, okay. I mean, this Lord is dead. And this army. Do I wanna see that, boys. I wanna see that. He has taken every single combo from his opponent. Well, that's dope. Now, uh, don't try to kill Aragorn. I'm telling you, Aragorn! No, you can't! What a fiesta! I don't wanna miss this too. Oh my goodness, did you see what happened? That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Gandalf can't match with Aragorn in... Boom, nice. Can't... He might lose loot, by the way. Can't match with Aragorn. Actually, what a turnaround. Everything was looking great for the for the Gonda Isengard team. He lost. He lost his Gandalf to Aragorn. Aragorn, by the way, is almost level 8. And Isengard is forced to disengage. Now they have leadership back too. With Vorchan, Theoden and Aragorn. Good luck dealing with that. How did he lose his Aragorn like that? I can't believe that. He can't... I mean, Gandalf like that to Aragorn. That's unbelievable. I mean, you can't face tank Aragorn as Gandalf. That's literally not possible. That's a suicide mission. And I don't remember that Gandalf was joining the Suicide Squad 2 in the upcoming film. Soon in the cinema. Oh my goodness, they are glowing, shining bright like a diamond. Look at this damage output, ladies and gentlemen. It is almost level 4-2. The Gondor Knights, they can't really commit level 8 Aragorn. Level 8. Two levels away from summoning the army of the dead. In Elven allies, they are just scared from the king of King Elisa of Gondor as he's screaming Elendil. Nearby units flee. Also, a you know, possible description, nearby enemy units running for their lives. Here has been used to keep Tilden alive. Tilden is taking so much damage. Loris charge can be used to make him a bit tanky. You see how weak he is, right? How much damage he's taking. He's gonna... Oh my goodness, not even close. Calculated, I would say. Aragorn can stand. I mean, he has to stand now because he's crippled. Fireball might be used. He's gonna use the Vizaplas, miss the units. And summon from Rohan now. Aragorn is tanky, he has Atelas. He's good, trust me, he's good. He can always use the Blade Master to become even more tanky. Now the last march of the end. What is going on in this game? What a fiesta! If you wanna see more fiesta like that, guys, please don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Would be nice if we can reach 15,000 subs by the end of this year. That's the goal. And maybe we can also hopefully get 250 likes on this video just to show your support to the channel. Gonna take you 5 seconds. Doesn't cost you anything. Do me the favor, guys. Come on now. Come on now. And if you wanna go crazy with the favor, you can also follow me on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash beyondstandard. Oh my goodness, he was able to hit both the ends with the same fireball. But Ar Aragorn, you see Aragorn. Where is Treebeard? You need Treebeard. Oh, look, the tree killer. Okay, look, Aragorn is tanking like level 3 furnaces, towers, lords, Saruman, everything. Does he have heal? Almost back up. No, that's not uh, Rohan, that's Rohan, and he has heal on cooldown. Lourdes is gonna be able to kill him, right? Yeah, Lourdes is the. Level 9 hero now. It's a huge Rohan army though. But he has to revive his Aragorn. Very important. You see how expensive it is because he's level 8. You need to invest so much money. Gandalf is back on the field. He was actually getting killed without killing anything. He has gathered zero experience. 
He was just overestimating Gandalf and definitely underestimating Aragorn. In this game, what a fiesta, but it is not over yet, guys. It is not over yet. This Gandalf has to be careful as long as Lourdes is alive, because Lourdes can cripple him down, and unlike Aragorn, Gandalf isn't that tanky. This Isengard has not many units around. He has only Lourdes and Saruman, and that's it. So now they need to make a plan. They need to play smart about this. They need, they need to try somehow to kill this Lourdes, somehow. He crippled him down, but what's the matter? How can you kill him, though? Fireball. Beautiful fireball. Gondor Knights. I mean, he has two defense now, right? But they have so much leadership. Holy moly, they have Lourdes leadership, 60. Borchan, 50. And 50 from Theodin. That means 160% damage. Are they, are they gonna even die? Cripple him. I can't believe that. Cripple him, please. I mean, doesn't matter anything, I think, right? Just use Easter Light. It's gonna use on... Oh, you see? With the Glorious Charge, they're gonna become so tanky. Kill them as well. Lourdes is gonna eventually die. Kill him. They are trying to kill Gandalf. He was able to take the control of these units. Lourdes has been taken down. And now some of the Rohirrim are fighting for Isengard. I believe Gandalf is in a safe spot. What is this game? And also Tildin has been taken down. What is this game? Okay, Gandalf is level 7 now. What a beautiful game this is actually, guys. What a back and forth game. Oh my goodness. What do you guys think about this game? Let me know in the comment section down below. I don't know, man. It's unpredictable. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what's going on and what can happen in about a minute. Because they are making mistakes and these mistakes are actually making this game so much more entertaining. And interesting to watch. Just don't feed anymore. This Gandalf is killing everything now. All of a sudden, he's the MVP from Gonzo. The level 10 Gondor Knight is gonna be able to get away. Maybe some trebuchet soonish. But it looks like the Gondor player is just gonna spam more and more Gondor Knights on the field. Just why not? Leveling up those Gondor Knights with Gandalf around is kinda easy because Gandalf gives you a huge combat experience boost of 200%. When he's nearby and you kill a single tower, you get like two levels immediately. And also more armored Eagle Summon. Eagle Summon is kind of questionable because there are still many, many level 3 furnaces and archers and combos. Go for a Vizar Blast with Gandalf. He has no loot on the field just yet. That's a suicide mission with the Eagle, you know? He's gonna take so much damage for no reason. I believe in this kind of situations you could just send Gandalf in and go for a juicy Vizar Blast instead. Okay, Vizar Blast is incoming. Beautiful. Gandalf is in level 8. Can he take down the Fortress before Lourdes can come out? Maybe Easter Light, yeah. It's gonna be enough, almost enough. He's losing a lot of this Gondor Knight, and Rohirrim are coming now for the reinforcement. He's trying, committing maybe a little bit too much. Does, he doesn't do anything for you if you take down the, oh my goodness, what a mistake from Stevie there. He lost like many of these Gondor Knights and his Eagle Summon for no reason. Eagle Summon was kind of blown away. And there was... Oh yeah, you, you hear the king, guys, right? He will return to fulfill his destiny. Six power points collected for Gonzo after the Eagle Summon. And Rohan has three power points only after the End Summon. So he needs seven power points still. Gondo needs only four until AOD, AOD. Actually, three and a half for the Army of the Dead. Ra, the Red Isengard player, needs like six power points for the Balrog Summon. And... The blue Isengard play is still far away because he went for the Devastation, right? So that's gonna be minus 4. And now he needs, what, over 11 power points still. Aragorn is tough. I hope uh, Gandalf learned his lesson that he couldn't or shouldn't uh, try to take him down in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Again, Aragorn is extremely tanky and also hitting like an absolute track, guys. Trust me on that one. Aragorn is next level. You know, imagine... Uh, the situation in which Theodin with Krima Wormtongue, you know, he was like, haha, you have no power here. And then Gandalf is showing his uh, real color, Gandalf the White. And Aragorn would like, haha, you have still no power here because I'm here. I'm the real threat. I'm the real king. Because let's be honest, for me, about cost efficiency, about the tankiness, about the damage output, and even about the mobility. He's one of the fastest heroes on foot. Only Lourdes and Legolas are able to compete with him. He will always be able to outrun, for example, Faramir, Boromir, they are no match. And Gimli, of course not. Gimli is extremely slow until he has Slayer. So he's fast. He's extremely tanky. Has sustain. Can summon an army after that. This one battalion can actually kill the full army. Lightning Sword? Well, he will miss it, unfortunately. Okay. 
So now they are both building up an army worthy of Mordor. Almost 9 power points collected. We might see army of the dead in this game though. But remember Balrog is a bit more dangerous because Balrog is going to be able to destroy the full base of Gondor all alone. And Gondor player might be forced to buy the camp in the middle. So Rohan is also pretty strong now. They have Glorious Charge. Now full upgraded Rohirrim with Horseman Shields. Uh, and eventually Warchant. You know, Warchant the horses with Glorious Charge. And right before you trample down the enemy units, your ally is using Freezing Rain. That's the dream. You can actually kill everything. Oh yeah, he's gonna use the Alvin Root. Oh my goodness, he killed like a lot. Like, he has almost... You see how much damage he was able to deal? He didn't kill this battalion, but he killed all the archers from the other ones. And the remaining ones are badly damaged. But he was, <clears throat> but he was using his Alvin Wood for this reason. Alvin Wood is tricky, by the way, guys. So, um, if you use Alvin Wood and your ally is using Rain, so the enemy has to just step on your land and leave the land and they will have the leadership back. Oh, it was really close. He's trying to get away with the level 7. Very important to save him. But that's a Rohan uh, Alvin ally summon to actually kill the battalion. Very smart move here from Stevie. Making sure that this level 7 Rohirrim is not making it back home. And he is also still 5.5 power points away from the army of the dead. While Gondor needs only around 2 power points. And Isengard is making finally a move. He has, he has not recruited Saruman all game long by the way. That's kind of cringe. I would love to see Saruman also from the Red Isengard player, but I'm assuming he's investing all the money he got actually into getting more and more combos. Since he keeps losing them, he has to replace them, he keeps losing them, he has to replace them. I want to see a big fight. Freezing Rain has been used already. Fireball. Oh, these two wizards side by side. Imagine that in, a, in the films, you know, if Saruman and Gandalf would be teamed up, you know, if Saruman would not be the bad guy, but a good guy in, instead. And he's just sporting Gandalf in the Middle Earth against the forces of Mordor. This would be easy peasy. Oh, big commitment. War. Oh my god. He's, it's coming. Oh, he. That's a very. Why? Oh, Aragorn might be. Um, Aragorn? You see Aragorn damage, guys? Boom! Oh my goodness. Wait a sec. Hold on a second. This guy might get level 10. Army of the Dead, but Aragorn can kill that. Aragorn can kill that. Keep that in mind. Aragorn with Andorin's Sword can kill Army of the Dead in no time. Watch this. Attack Aragorn! Attack! 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 Oh, don't run like that! Attack! What is he doing? Oh, he just did... Just stand! Don't chase! Just stand! And kill anything that comes to you! When you right-click on the Battalion of Army of the Dead, you will always run in circles! Just stand! You know? Oh, what a... <laughs> I was just saying, we have not seen the Saruman one time and then he's coming in the worst possible... <laughs> timing! Oh no, is he gonna get away? No, he's not gonna get away, right? Or is he? Or is he not? Oh, never mind, army of the dead is gone and... Uh, <laughs> what is going on? He lost Aragorn too. Aragorn was almost level 10, he has to revive him now. Oh, eagles, who oh, hear him? That's the power of Gondor in late game. Gondor is the best and the most summons in the game by far. You have the eagle summon, who oh, hear him summon, Alvin summon. And Army of the Dead Summon. Eagle Summon is 99.9% .9 of the time better than the End Summon. And Rohirrim Summon is a very additional summon which, but Rohan doesn't have. So yeah, Rohan has the Alvin Wood, Alvin Ally Summon. And um, Army of the Dead. They are matching. But that's the Army of the Dead now from the Rohan player. He wants to break down the gate. And, oh my goodness, what is going on? Balrog at the same time. Break the gate. Break the gate. He's flying backwards, guys. He's styling. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Balrog of Morgoth inside the Gondor Citadel. What a fiesta. What is going on? And Gandalf, once again, I can't believe that. Why you did you suicide, suicide like that? That was a really big mistake from Stevie. He knew. Lurt is around. Breath fire. Not the best. You can always hit five, but it's okay. It's more than enough. Gondor has to buy, but you see what Rohan is doing in the meantime, he's dancing around the Rosie to deny Gondor from buying this camp. This guy is a legend, dude. There is a reason why this guy, and he's buying the camp himself to just make sure that Gondor can't buy it. And that finishing off this castle, yes, is gonna defeat Stevie. Stevie has been defeated, now it's gonna be a 2v1 situation. 
this has to be one of the best games I was able to commentate so far. And I want you guys to let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about this game and about the performance of all four players, but especially from this Rohan player and from this Gonda player. It was extremely nice. This Isengard still needs a lot until he has Balrog because once again, wasting the four power points into the devastation is gonna slow you down eventually. I mean, he had to do that, right? Because he didn't have no money in order to stay in the game that was kinda needed, I get it. But uh, still, Rohan, I mean, don't, good luck killing him. How can you kill him now? Like, even if you destroy this camp in the middle, that's not gonna do anything for you. And he's gonna call it GG very soon. He's not even anywhere close for the ro for the uh, Balrog summon yet. He has no money. He can't even revive his Saruman anymore, right now at least. And now, I mean, it's a matter of time, right? I don't I don't see the, him actually turning this game around. Even if he gets Balrog somehow uh, and manages to destroy the Rohan castle, Rohan won't be defeated because he has the middle camp. And Isengard won't be defeated like five times, so. It, you couldn't handle them to be one and I want to see all I want to see is like Aragorn getting level 10 and he is really close for that power spike and summoning the Offbreaker and screaming fight for me and I will hold your oath fulfilled what say you I mean all you gotta do is just cripple him down I mean I mean that's all you can do let's be real because you can't stop him like look look he's shooting him by the way that's a level 10 Lourdes you see his damage Without Blade Master and Attila's being still available, he can tank this forever. <laughs> Look, this Lumber Mill worker, what you doing, bro? <laughs> okay, there comes the commitment. Glorious Charge is available, but he has only one single Rohirrim. Is it worth it for this one? I don't think so. He knows, wasting time on uh, Aragorn, he can always press one button and he's gonna be back to full HP. And if this is not enough, you have also the heal from the Spellbook, which is on cooldown for now, but it's gonna be eventually back up. In the meantime, also Rohan was able to get the map control. Stevie has been defeated, his powerpoint, his units, his heroes, everything is gone, his money as well. And Isengard is kind of slowed down a bit, just be a bit faster. I believe he has not that much money, right? No, he has actually no money at all, like, he has no money. I mean, just ask your ally to give you the farms, you know, in those kind of situations. If you know that you are struggling, ask your ally. Unlike in BFME 2, and there would be a huge improvement, unlike in BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King in the team matches in Battle for Middle Earth 1, you can send money to your ally. That would be kinda dope. And also what would be nice in Battle for Middle Earth 1 are the battle formations, like the aggressive stance, the battle stances, you know, the hold crown stance, the normal stance. There would be a nice improvement. Uh, but on the other side, you can't combine any units in BFME 2, and I believe combining units is also great. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, hey, hey! Yes, Atelas, by the way. Bye bye. <laughs> Look, back to full HP. Oh, that's a mistake, my dude. That's a mistake, my dude. Lords. Lords is a mistake. Level 10. Ain't fight for me. Before he goes down, he's calling his off breakers. And even gets away. Oh, I cannot believe that. Aragorn is the goat. The king of the man of the West. The king of Gondor. The king Elisa. The son of Arathorn. Isildur's heir. Does he have Balrog yet? Nope. He still needs one more power point. The thing is, as Isengard or Mordor, you get power points from losing stuff. So if Saruman comes and he dies, you will get one power point at least. <laughs> so you will have the chance for Balrog summon. He might just wait for that, just to show that he has also the Balrog summon. But even with Balrog once again, that wouldn't change too much about this situation. Then it's coming. Will Saruman make it out? Oh yeah, he's almost level 10 too. Unfortunately, unlike his uh, other wizard, unlike the other wizard in Battle for Middle of One, this wizard has uh, no level 10 ability. Let's go for it. Is that blast? Phew, nice. Now he has 20. Is he gonna use it? Is he gonna use it? Where is he gonna use it? I mean, he has to use it around this area because you need to have vision to summon stuff. And vision of Palantir is on cool and that means he can't use it anywhere else but around this side, around uh, the bottom left side of the map. That's the only possibility. <laughs> okay. He's trying to beat them into chasing Saruman, so he wanna use it underneath. I can read him like a book. No, he's summoning it here. The demon from the ancient ball. I summon the blue eyes. No, that's not the wrong. That's not the right game. Okay. 
just kill your kill yourself. He's killing himself, guys. What an honor. Karkira has been defeated. What a phenomenal limit mask between Gondor Eisen and Rohan Eisen. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Mistakes were needed to make this game as great as it was. And if you guys think the same, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. And also check me out on my Twitch channel for more BFME live streams about tournaments, events and everything else. And I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.